everyone, so welcome back to my channel. As you can see by the title of the video, this is a bit more of a personal video to me. It's something that I've wanted to talk about for a long time and if you've been following my blog you would have seen about three years ago I did a post about Crohn's disease when I was going through a bit of a flare up and I spoke a little bit about it there but I only touched upon a small amount of my personal life style with it. It's really hard to get my words out in front of a camera so I'm going to try and keep this video as chatty as possible as if I was talking to a friend because I find it quite easy to talk about in everyday life anyway and I'm not ashamed of it or embarrassed or anything like that. So this is a video of Crohn's disease. I'm going to try and talk about the symptoms, the diagnosis, my general story with Crohn's and my sort of journey throughout the years that I've had it and then just like quality of life and stuff like that so people can understand it a little bit more because the one thing that I've found with Crohn's is that people aren't 100% sure what it is and what it can do and what it what it can affect in terms of like your lifestyle and things like that so it's, it's mainly just to put the information out there as well as to show you guys what I sort of go through and things like that because I've had a lot of questions about it in the past. Long introduction but if there's anything that I miss out and that you're intrigued upon please make sure you ask me questions in the comments below because I'm more than happy to answer them in thorough detail or if you want to email me or whatever then please do. So first of all what is Crohn's disease? A lot of people ask and they assume that it's similar to IBS. Okay so IBS does affect your digestion um, and makes it irritable but Crohn's is very different in the way that it works and it's triggered and things like that so so Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disease now what that is is it falls into a bracket where so it's triggered by your immune system because it is essentially your body attacking itself so it fights areas of your digestive tract so it can start from anywhere in your mouth right down to your bottom and <laughs> Anywhere in your digestive system, Crohn's can essentially attack an area, so it's your white blood cells that usually fight infection, are overactive essentially. So I hope this is making sense. So your white blood cells that are meant to help you are overactive. For example, in a blood test, a person's normal blood cell count should be in between 4 and 10. Mine was at 17. So that just goes to show you someone with Crohn's will have an overactive white blood cell count. So Crohn's is essentially your immune system fighting an area of your digestive system, causing it to become inflamed and sore, and therefore you cannot digest food properly, you don't absorb nutrients, you can lose weight, you can develop anemia. In turn it can cause a lot of problems, which I'll get into. So that's essentially what Crohn's disease is, it's, it's to do with your digestion and obviously your immune system. So the symptoms of Crohn's, can vary depending on the person. So I'm just gonna list some symptoms that obviously I've known and learned about throughout the years of having it. So symptoms, diarrhea, let's just get that one out of the way. So you can develop diarrhea or constipation. They're both very um, dependent on where your Crohn's is located in your body. Um, Severe stomach cramps, pelvis pain, anemia, so tiredness, extreme fatigue, muscle pain, joint pain. There's quite a long list of symptoms which I will leave a link below Crohn's and Colitis UK charity page because it's amazing for friends and family or just in general if you want to read up more on the disease, it's an amazing charity. My story then. So I was diagnosed in 2005 and I was 13 years old. But I started getting problems from about 12 years old. How it started is I essentially became very poorly um, and my mum just kind of assumed that I'd had like a bug or I was just tired from school or something. So it started off because I wasn't really eating my dinner very much. Um, I just didn't have an appetite at all. I would sort of eat and then as soon as I'd ate I'd go straight up to my bed and I'd fall to sleep and then I'd sleep right, and through, right through until the next day of school. That wasn't right, I was tired all the time. And then I started 
getting bad tummy in terms of I started going to the loo a lot more. It wasn't normal, it was like you could tell something wasn't quite right. And I was very pale, I was very sort of lethargic and I just wasn't right in myself. I've usually, all my life I've been like crazy, funny five minutes, dancing, singing, being just a bit, you know, hyperactive and I just lost that, I lost my spark. After a few trips to the doctors, um, at first they just thought, you know, it could be this, it could be that, and they just pointed the finger at different things. Um, eventually it just wasn't getting any better, so they planned to admit me into hospital. This is after about six months of like different blood tests and different doctors seeing me and stuff like that, and they just weren't getting anywhere with it. Eventually they admitted me into hospital for like a long weekend, like a little holiday type thing in the hospital. I say long weekend, it was like a Monday to a Friday type thing, I, I don't really understand how that worked, but anyway. So they admitted me into hospital and they did like an MRI scan, um, an ultrasound, several blood tests, you know, to the point where they were taking bloods out of my hands because I ran out of veins for them to do it on. They just did a variation of tests. Eventually, obviously they diagnosed Crohn's disease. It can affect the way that your body works depending on what you eat, so obviously they went through a lot of trying and testing to see if I had various like lactose intolerance or um, celiac and things like that. Anyway, they diagnosed me with Crohn's disease and I was 13 years old and to be honest at that age I think you're very resilient and you can either really let it affect you or you can just get on with it and I kind of, that's just what I did really, I just got on with it. Um, I didn't fully understand what it meant, um, I just knew it meant that I was poorly, I didn't really know at that at that stage in my life that it would be sort of a long term, like a lifestyle thing. So I got diagnosed um, and then it was a case of putting me on medication so I went on azathioprine which is an immunosuppressant tablet which is meant to lower your immune system and therefore stop it being so aggressive and fighting um, your body. Immunosuppressant, I went on steroids which gets rid of the initial inflammation. It can also bring really horrible side effects which I'll insert some pictures of a before and after of what my face looks like when I'm on steroids and one of the most hard side effects to deal with is something called moon face which a lot of people said that they didn't notice but I think they're just being polite. I did swell out a lot um, on my face and my ankles and stuff like that and yeah it just it just wasn't it's just not pleasant to be on. That obviously those pictures were obviously not when I was younger but they were more recent. So I went on these drugs and I went on a course of antibiotics as well as a, a varied amount of medication. I won't try and list because we're talking this is like 12 years ago. So anyway, I went on the top drugs and for a year or so they tried it out and they it just wasn't quite working. I was still very poorly, I was still very ill, I was still anemic, etc. Um, and it got to the point where when they were doing the scans and stuff it just didn't quite go away. Um, these things weren't, they were getting rid of the initial pain but they weren't getting rid of the infection so it turned into an infection rather than inflammation which it can progress into bad infections and all sorts. So I went on a three month liquid diet which was the hardest thing, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do it, within my Crohn's story um, because I was doing it at school and through my GCSEs and it was just really difficult. I went on a three month liquid diet and they basically said to me that this was the, the final thing that they would do um, and if that didn't work I'd have an operation, which eventually did happen. I had an operation. It's, it was called, for any of you people that are watching this that are that know Crohn's, um, it was a right hemicolectomy. So what this means is they did it by keyhole surgery. I was very, very lucky. My surgeon did an amazing job. Um, and they cut 30 centimetres of my um, large intestine, which is the connection between my small and my large, was where I was infected. They cut a piece out and then they rejoined the, the bowel. So it's quite a big operation. So when they opened me up, they realised that the extent of the infection was a lot worse than they thought. Basically, they had to prise a lot of the bowel, the infected bowel, away from my bladder um, because everything had stuck together. And at the time, I was literally, before the op, um, I was like throwing up bile and I was like walking hunched over because it just hurt so much, that's how bad it got. Um, and I, as much as I want to go into my hospital visits, I would be here all day because I've been in hospital quite a lot and I've had like tubes in my nose and um, all sorts of things. But anyway, so that was that, I had my operation. After my operation, my life started again and, and it was like, 
I could just live my teenage years without living in pain and things. So that was at 15 years old, and then when I recovered, I think I I think I recovered in like three months. Obviously, it was a slow journey, and I went to school and I got like a pass to leave early and stuff like that. So it was progression, and I definitely felt a lot better when the pain of the operation hit on and my scars started healing and stuff. I mean, I'll show you my scars now quickly. So these are my scars. Um, you can barely see them because obviously it was a long time ago now, but this was the main one through my belly button here. And then I've got like one here, one, where is it? Here. Can't even see it because my trousers has been digging into me. And then I've got another one like here. So they're my scars and I rarely get my belly out just because I don't like it. Anyway just move on from that, let's just push that to one side. The next few years, um, seven years, symptom free, love and life, going out, drinking, being a teenager, doing what you should do in your, you know, 15 to 20 years old. Started uni, I went through college, I had an amazing time, I had a great quality of life, as anyone should as a teenager and as a young person. I managed to do that and I'm so grateful. It does make you appreciate life. A lot more anyway obviously I've had tummy aches here and there and you get like stitches and like like a stitch sort of thing um, and you do f I do feel tired a lot but I think that's down to the anemia that I had um, and I've basically put on medication so you're on like anti-inflammatories and iron and they just keep you in remission so at the end of December 2014 I had a big flare-up and this was highly highly due to lifestyle I was commuting um, from Portsmouth to London every day. I started a new job in October. Um, it was to get my foot in the door and to move to London and it was completely my decision but it really took it out of me. Um, it was it was hard. So I travelled two and a half hours door to door there and then back again, so five hours a day travelling. And eventually it did make me really ill and I was hospitalised in December 2014. So after a lot of tests they realised that my Crohn's had come back, this time there was information in my small intestine and they've put me on a course of medication, the azathioprine again which obviously lowers your immune system, steroids, um, I'll insert some more pictures of like my hospital um, hospital time and, um, and I'll see how my face went and stuff like that, um, you'll, see, you'll see them here. So yeah, so it was, it was a hard it was another hard time to deal with and it meant a lot of time of work and letting people down um, and unfortunately a part of this disease, even though we can't control it, um, people with, with Crohn's, we can't control the disease however it does affect people around us and it does affect life and it does affect um, your ability to work, obviously you're in a lot of pain. Um, so I, I felt like I was letting people down quite a lot in that in that period. But I pulled through it and I still travelled to London as much as I could. I had like a couple of days off a week when I first went back. Yeah, I, gra I gradually I gradually got myself better. I pushed through it as much as I could. And obviously I moved to London in March, had to change all my hospital and stuff like that. So basically that's my journey um, so far and taking me up to the current day. Basically day to day life, I want to talk about day to day life and what we're up to now. So my day to day life can vary. I can be absolutely fine for two days, singing, dancing, my usual, my usual self, um, happy person. And then it hits me like a ton of bricks and I always say it comes back with vengeance, like that's how I can explain it. So recently um, I've been getting a lot of problems with vomiting and nausea and pain, like someone's tied a knot in my stomach. Because it is in my small intestine, it's slightly higher up, so I've been getting pain like here. So yeah, it's it's been really difficult to deal with, and I think the one thing that I, I just want to put out there is that I can wear makeup, I can look nice, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm feeling well. I read a really great quote, and I'm going to put it here, so you can see it for yourself. And it's basically, basically when you've had Crohn's for the the amount of years that I have had, 12 years coming on 13, you become very good at hiding the fact that you're ill. It's it's really easy to, to put on a front and you don't want to talk about it all the time, you don't want to bring it up all the time, you don't want to constantly every day wake up and be like, I've got a tummy ache today. It's just it's just very boring, it's so boring when you're, you're fighting your hardest to not let it become who you are and define who you are 
hence why it's taken me so long to do this video, it's just a part of who I am, but there's days where it can overcome me and make me just not myself. That's the hardest part to deal with, especially as I'm so motivated to achieve things in my life. So that's one thing with Crohn's is that you cannot control it and days happen where it's debilitating. So at the moment, if I'm vomiting and stuff like that, I'm trying to literally get it out of my system as much as possible and take painkillers so I can go into work and force myself to go into work and it's tough but you just you just have to get through it basically um so day to day at the moment obviously i'm going through a bit of a flare-up at the moment so i mean, i'm struggling but day-to-day -day life with crohn's disease it can be it can be livable and it can be fine like and it does give you a push to really better yourself when you have days when you are pain free so at the moment i am struggling so if you see things on twitter and stuff like that um, or you see me out and about on my Instagram, a lot of the time I'm not actually out, I'm, in, I'm at home in my pyjamas, you don't see me 100% of the time. So I just want you basically to realise that behind closed doors there's a lot more going on to people than you, than you would consider. And that's obviously my story with Crohn's disease and it's an ongoing thing, I'll have it for the rest of my life. Just to end, I want to talk about medication and restrictions. This is the medication that I have to take every day. Um, this is like an anti-inflammatory which is called Pentasa. I also take this thing which is to help like acid in your stomach. Um, I take cranberry tablets which helps like my bladder because I have I'm prone to bladder infections because obviously they or the operation where they had to prise it away from my bladder, it caused a lot of issues there. So I take cranberry tablets. I also have eye drops because um, with Crohn's it can affect any small tissues in your body because it's an immuno disease or autoimmune disease. Um, so I currently have like inflammation in my eyes so I have to take steroid drops in my eyes um, and again this can affect joints in your knees and stuff like that. Anything can become inflamed when you have this. You're prone to like more more immune um, problems you know along the way. I take azathioprine which lowers my immune system and it means I have to have flu jab, hep B jabs, everything like that every year um, to stop me getting nasty infections. And I also take Citrolopram, which is an anxiety tablet, which um, after years and years and years of fighting anxiety, I finally decided to get medication for it last November, and I've not been happier since, and I'm on the lowest dose possible. So um, anxiety is just something that comes with having, obviously, um, health problems. Restrictions, restrictions, there are none. If you've got Crohn's disease, please, please don't feel bad about yourself. Um, and if you've got someone you know with Crohn's or whatever, it's very hard to understand. And please don't feel like you are not being there for your friend as much as you can. It's really difficult. And at the end of the day, we have to deal with it on our own. You need to be positive. You need to get through life as best as you can on days where you are, are well. And I like to think that I try and do that as much as possible. The only restriction is obviously dietary, um, I've got to go see a dietitian in a minute um, to discuss a certain diet that I'm on currently. That's basically it. I think I tried to touch on like the basics of it but it's such a complex disease that it's like I could literally talk to you guys for an hour to two hours and I would probably bore the hell out of you. But I just want you to know that don't judge someone if they look well um, because this is an invisible illness and obviously we do suffer and then there's days where we can go out and gallivant around the town and do what we want that's just that's just the way it is so anyway um there's a couple of charities i really want you to know about one is called get your belly out and it's one that i absolutely love um there's a forum on facebook and if they if i didn't have them to just moan at and ask advice to every day then i'd be lost um they're amazing and you can donate to their charity and they're really helping people live day-to-day -day life with Crohn's disease and also Crohn's and Colitis UK they're an amazing charity and there's so many things that you can do you can do fundraising walks and all sorts and it's really positive um, people with Crohn's disease we we have to fight for it every day and it's difficult but we're also there's a lot of positivity around our um, groups and please come and join us if you've got Crohn's or if you've got a family member with Crohn's disease um, we want to welcome you um, and you know we're there for each other and um, I hope if you've watched this and you just you've come because you know my blog and stuff like that then I hope you can understand sometimes what I go through and why I put negative tweets on 
Twitter and stuff like that sometimes. So yeah, that's basically all I have to say. I'm sorry it was a long video. I like to usually keep them under 10 minutes, but obviously there was a lot to say. So I hope you don't mind, and if you did watch all of this and you've taken as much in as possible, then thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it, and if there's any questions or anything else you want to know, please leave it in the comments below and subscribe to my channel, and yeah, that's about it really. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye!